love it. I love it. And it, it makes so much sense to me. I'm a content creator, right? I create a lot of videos and it makes a lot of sense to me. I'm hoping that through the course of doing these videos and following, you know, we're really going to try to work with educators uh, that we're going to um, talk about that more. Uh, it deserves more time but we, that we don't have right now. 80% of the interaction with a teacher from a student will be on a smartphone, only using a computer for more detailed work like presentations and papers. But even when they were showing what they could do on a phone, it blew you away. This is something that's, again, a modern times kind of thing. Five years ago, yeah. 10 years ago, I don't think every student had a smartphone. Today, it impresses us what they're doing with a smartphone so much, you can't even tell if they did it with a computer or a smartphone because it's it looks like so incredible, right? Yeah, and that's what I, I got blown away with. And you know, I've got, because of all the background of streaming and all that, I've got all the analytics on the background that tell me what it came from, what they're interacting with computer, smartphone, and I started to see that a lot more of my interaction was smartphone. Um, and so I sit there and I'd have to do their little stuff unless we're doing a big project where they had to do, you know, a PowerPoint presentation or something like that, that I'd gear it more towards the computer. Otherwise, it should be something that they can answer on the phone because if it's, if it's easy for them to do, they're going to do it. And that's how you want to make the education easy, easily accessible. Um, but then I sat there and a couple were like, well, can we make a video for you? And I'm like, well, if, if you want to, but I just was looking for, and all of a sudden iMovie on the, on the iPhones, we're churning out things that I'm sitting there going, this is almost commercial quality. And you guys did this with your iPhone. And they're like, yeah. And, and so they broke it down for me. And, you know, I'm sad they're graduating because I'm like, I could have used you for sports last, next year, bud. So, you know, well, and, and I love that because I think that that's something that a lot of teachers don't realize themselves is that you've got a smartphone, you have a project in front of you, you're trying to teach students mm -hmm. about it, shoot it with your, your smartphone, you've got iMovie on there. Now you've got your B roll, it's a beautiful two, three, four, five minute clip. And it's now part of your course and it didn't take you as much time as you thought, you know, using a professional video editing software. Sure. You need to take a whole course on that, but using your smartphone with a built in video editor, it's, it's out there now. And, and so it's very easy for them to on the flip side for teachers to use that as well. Yeah. You know I, it, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. You know what I found interesting too about phones and some of the apps are more advanced than the desktop version. Mm -hmm. So like, for instance, um, we just played around, my daughter and I, we did a podcast um, during the pandemic, and the Anchor app has more features for editing than the actual desktop. Um, so it's it's really interesting. Sorry to cut you off. No, no, that that's about what I was going to say, is that these a lot of times have that ability that even the desktop doesn't have, unless you're doing like Adobe and you're using Premiere Pro or things like that, which not every student's going to have access to, but, you know, like the Anchor app. You know, and many ones that are free out there just yeah. blows you away what they can do. Yeah. Yeah. And we do have an upcoming presentation on the top 10 smartphone apps for educators. Again, in the future, we've got uh, so much great stuff. In fact, here's one that I wanted to add um, to Drake is that something a lot of, they've all got their smartphones and mm -hmm. a great feature on there is speech to text. Students can speak faster than they can type and they've got that feature on there. Is that something that you would encourage students to use for uh, maybe blog posting, commenting, entering text into the chat room, things of that nature? I actually I would. It was one that I was hesitant at doing first because I thought it was the easy way out until I started grading some uh, text speech in papers. And that got real interesting because I had to literally grab my teenagers and go decipher this. I have no clue what it says. Um, <laughs> and getting the speech to text um, it well for one it got that oratory that they were speaking it as well not just typing it so there was that extra layer of learning with it as well um, and for me I kind of sat there and said well maybe by them seeing what it's doing seeing what it's saying it'll help them when they have to type something out later down the future because they'll have seen well the speech to text did it this way I should do it this way because yeah my first one's Back when I left junior high, wow, those were, you know, R, U, 8. I'm like going, eh, what? So, uh, you know, it's the speech to text helps bridge that gap that a lot of them are used to shorthand. 
on smartphones right now, and it gets them back to thinking, you know, I guess, normal text. So it could be a little misleading because they're saying, well, the smartphone has it this way. And so there's definitely a need for an educator, um, a teacher in that, that form to say, hey, you know, if you, it's clear that you use speech to text here, let's edit this. Let's make sure that you're not taking this at face value. But on the flip side, it's helping them get the content out of their brains. They're speaking it. Like you said, there's that mm-hmm. auditory level of it that's, that, that helps. Um, and I think teachers can even use this too. Um, if you're on the go, need to leave a comment, you can review what the speech to text said and make sure it's, it's obviously accurate. 